Hi, Christian. How are you doing? Good. How's it going? How are you doing, Zach? Good uh, man, to see you. Hey, good to see you. That that video is intense, man. That was kind of had me at the edge of my seat the entire time and kind of gave me anxiety. But holy cow, what sights you guys get to see. Yeah, thanks. Um, watching that again, it actually still gives me goosebumps, too, thinking back of uh, thinking back about that trip and, and what went down to, to get into that into that ice cave. Yeah, it, it seemed real. It, it must be insane in person, but the way that you're able to capture it and, and share that with us, it, it makes me feel like I'm right there. Yeah, it was um, pretty uh, pretty intense going down into that thing and, um, and photogenically, you know, as far as, you know, photography side of things mm -hmm. it uh originally we, we thought it would be super dark and you know lots of lights and flashes and stuff yeah. to light it up but uh there was so much light just beaming through the ice just uh, uh, natural ambient light uh it kind of just blew us all away of how uh, how intense and how beautiful it was down there with just kind of the light from under nature nice yeah that's insane i mean let let's let's jump in now to a little bit of like who you are and and kind of how you kind of got into photography because your photography is seen worldwide you've traveled worldwide and done international campaigns tell me a little bit about how you got into photography and and where andela kind of came and started from you know it um it kind of all just fell into place uh i mean not to use the word organically but that's kind of how it happened um i went to to college in colorado and I was there, um, obviously, to get an education. But, you know, being in my uh, late teens, early 20s, my, my focus was uh, skiing and rock climbing and, and having fun. Yeah. And um, my freshman year, my father bought me an old, just uh, fully manual Nikon classic camera with the 50 millimeter lens. Mm -hmm. and I took a black and white photography class. And I would spend hours in the dark room processing black and white film and making prints and just uh, going, you know, above and beyond what my workload was for the class, just because I just fell in love with that whole process of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I ended up majoring in uh, photography, kind of um, kind of more of a fine arts uh, major. It wasn't a photography school I went to. It was actually a business school I went to, a really strong nice. business school. Good. And so it just, uh, it was just kind of, for me, it was just what I enjoyed doing, you know, and then, uh, you know, you got to pick a major. And I was like, well, I all my friends were there and, you know, studying business and economics and all that stuff. And I was like, I don't, I don't want to do that. You know, uh, the art seems like a much more fun way to go through school. And that's kind of the path I took. And, you know, at the time I never made a conscious effort, like, this is what I want to do with my career. You know, I, like I said, I was like 20 years old, 21 years old. I had no idea what I wanted to do. And at that time I just, I just wanted to be a ski bomb and a climbing bomb and, you know, ski and climb every day. And mm -hmm. um, then I graduated from college. Still didn't really know much about photography mm -hmm. because I was just kind of taking the fun way through school. It wasn't really a serious academic load. I actually took more classes on sculpture and <laughs> art history and stuff like that than I actually did photography classes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I moved to Mammoth, California when I was uh, 22 years old, 1993, which is a, a ski town, mountain nice. town. And um, you know, kind of just continued doing the same. Got a job at a restaurant working nights, so my days were free. And I'd go climb with my buddies and go skiing, a lot of backcountry skiing and a lot of skiing on the mountain. And mm -hmm. uh, of course, I dragged the camera around with me uh, more for fun, just because I enjoyed it as a hobby. And that's just kind of what mm -hmm. I like to do. It's a good way to capture moments, you know, with, mm -hmm. with what we were doing. And then I guess, uh, you know, after a year or two, people started looking at the photos and was just like, you should start considering sending these to a magazine you know and then uh ironically uh one day i was skiing this is you know um, kind of how it all got started uh, i ended up skiing with this guy throughout the whole day and we rode the chairlift and skied together and probably mm -hmm. around two in the afternoon after skiing for hours together we actually got talking more beyond of you know how rad that last run was and where do we want to take our next run to what we actually do and he's like i'm a photo editor for powder magazine and i was like no way i'm uh you know I'm just kind of getting into photography and I like taking pictures. And he's like, send me, uh, send me a bunch of photos. You know, wow. his name's David, his name's David Reddick. And he's still a photo editor at Power Magazine. What? Over 20 years ago. Wow. And uh, so at the time, you know, photography, then you're shooting slides. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I sent him a bunch of photos. He sent me, uh, he sent them back and gave me some really good constructive criticism. And then uh, I had a good friend of mine was trying to get into being a journalist, 
in the ski industry. I had a bunch of friends who were trying to be pro skiers. This was in, you know, the mid nineties, mm-hmm. just kind of a pipe dream for all of us. You know, at the time there weren't too many pro pro skiers out there, or people, you know, making a living in the, in the ski world like we wanted to. So we went out and uh, did a trip uh, just here in the local mountains. We spent like four days in the back country shooting photos at sunset and sunrise way high in the mountains. And it was actually in this over the summer solstice. So it was in June when we did this trip. And uh, my friend wrote a, wrote a uh, story from the trip. I submitted the photos and they loved both the photos and the, and the story. And the following uh, year, it was a feature in the magazine. And that was basically <laughs> the, uh, that was like the start of my, uh, <laughs> my career was, you know, in, yeah. in ski photography. Yeah. So it's kind of, you know, and then yeah. after that, it, you know, transitioned into um, quitting my job in the restaurant and just chasing my, uh, my photography <laughs> dream. And, you know, never looked back. The, uh, <laughs> yeah. That was back in the, you know, in the nineties, I've been uh, yeah. shooting photos ever since. Wow. That's incredible. Wow. That's quite a journey. And yeah, you, you know, what you've shot and the collection of images that we're going to see today, it's inspiring. And I know, you know, many of the people joining us today, there's some thinking about that, of making that leap, of taking that full time or, or following that passion and doing that. So it's such an inspiring story to see of how and what and everything comes together, you know, with that like drive that you can kind of create and do. Yeah. You know, I just, uh, yeah, a, a lot of passion, a lot of ambition, but you know, mm-hmm. I, I guess definitely some luck along the way too, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Let, let's start your slideshow on that and um, we can click through. Holy cow, it, this, you know, it's one thing to shoot the photo, but you're having to ski and then you're having to get down too. So you gotta be damn confident on what you're doing as well to be able to put yourself in this situation. That's pretty terrifying. Yeah, so if this particular image for me, is kind of, um, I, I'd, I'd almost say it's like one of my top three images as far as like mm-hmm. ski photography goes mm-hmm. uh, on, on several reasons. But yeah, as, as you said, it's, um, for a lot of the the photography I do, skiing related, it's uh, ski mountaineering, which is basically um, you climb up a real technical mountain. Uh, usually, we're using crampons, ice axes, sometimes ropes. Um, a lot of times, it might be repelling. Particularly for this photo, we had a repel here. But to you know, to capture an image like this, you got to be a part of a team. You know, yeah. we're going out in the mountains together, and we're a team together, and um, you know. From, from my side of things, I, I'm i doing what the athlete's doing. Mm-hmm. So it's incredibly gratifying and stimulating for me as well mm-hmm. to be doing this type of f- photography. You know, um, you know, it's one of the few aspects of photography where you actually have to do what yeah. the athlete's doing to capture, to do, you know, to capture the image because you got to do the same thing that they're doing. So Jeez. it's incredibly gratifying for, for me to, uh, to capture these kinds of images, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and generally, you know, what kind of approach I take I like to use wider angle lenses just because okay. we're usually high up in the mountains. Yeah. Uh, and obviously using a wide angle lens gives you a sense of place in your surrounding of, of where you're at, as yep. opposed to using a longer telephoto lens and shooting yeah. something super tight and dynamic. Right. Um, yeah. Which, you know, those images are awesome and have their place, but for this type of environment, it, it kind of takes the subject away from, mm-hmm. from where they're at. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of my approach. Uh, a lot of times when, when shooting these types of, uh, these types of photos. Right. It, it's beautiful. I mean, it, it's, it's terrifying too. Are you guys dropping off after this? So you guys have hiked up the mountain, you pull out your camera, you snap a couple of this POV, like, and then you guys are kind of dropping. What, what the hell is going on here? This is, so, so this, I'm like waiting for the image, helicopter to pick me up and get yeah, me so, out of there. So th- this image for me, like like I said, it, you know, on several fronts, it's kind of one of my, my favorite images. And um, uh, where it was shot is in Chamonix, Fran- Chamonix, France, and it's on the north face of the Guillemette, which if p- some people who may know or may not know, but the Guillemette is kind of like the most iconic place for extreme skiing. The best way to describe it would be the North Shore of Oahu for big wave <laughs> surfing yeah. or Yosemite for rock climbing. And mm-hmm. that's what Chamonix, France is for extreme skiing. You know, right. it's, the, it's the birthplace of extreme skiing. And as skiers, you go to Chamonix, France, and you go up this tram, which takes you from the valley floor, and it literally takes you 9,000 feet straight up to the top of these mountains. You're, mm-hmm. you're right there on the side of Mont Blanc, which is the highest point in the Alps. Wow. And as you go up this tram, you, you go up this crazy glaciated face, 
it's just all seracs and ice. And there's a few ski descents that that actually go down that. So you always go up this trail and you look out the window and you're just you you know you're going up a sheer <laughs> cliff of ice. <laughs> yeah. Pucker just can be already, you know. Yeah. And, and in the back of your mind, you're always thinking, wow, you can actually ski down that, but you can only do it, you know, maybe a week or two out of the year when conditions just come perfect. And, and even then, not every year are you even able to to ski it. So it's something I've dreamed about for over well over 10 years after skiing there. I never had the chance to actually ski it. So finally, uh, after spending a, a good amount of time this uh, this year back in 2010, conditions came into play and we were actually able to successfully, you know, ski the north face of the Gouille Midi. So Jeez. it's kind of, you know, it'd be yeah. like, you know, if you're a surfer and you paddle out the pipeline for the very first time, you know, mm. and you just use bumps and right. you know, it's, it's rather unnerving. But this, you know, this particular image when I, when I captured it, um, a lot of what I do, it's like photography comes second nature. You know, my primary focus is safety, skiing, getting down the mountain. Of course. And, the, you know, kind of an interesting fact about this photo is um, after I took this photo and we, we ski, we actually skied two runs down this north face of the Igui this particular day. Um, kind of one of the best days I've had on skis in my life. Wow. In Chamonix, you know, when you're done with the day, you, you go down and to the valley and this was in uh, June, so it's sunny and warm, and everybody goes to the mm. to the local bar, and you're, you know you're, you're having having beers and <laughs> super fat and yeah. it's warm and beautiful, and you know yeah. nine thousand feet up in the mountains, the, yeah. you know, the sun's setting on these high peaks. And uh, I had a really good friend of mine. Uh, he knew what we were, what we did that day, and he's like, "Hey, hey, Pete, let me let me look at your camera. Let me see what you got." Mm -hmm. And uh, I wouldn't just give my camera to anybody, you know, to just kind of like scroll through the back of the back of the camera to look at pictures, but I will with him and he's ripping through the photos and I'm drinking a beer and we're chatting and all of a sudden he like stops, taps me on the shoulder and he's like, this is the one. And he shows me this picture. He's like, this is the shot. This is the best shot. And I look at it and I'm like, I don't even remember taking that picture. And I honestly had no recourse of taking the picture at that time because oh. the intensity of the yeah. situation of where we're at mm. and what we were doing. And basically what's going on there is where we're at at this point, we're kind of at the point of like no return. There, there was no hiking back up and out. Yeah. Um, we, were, we were committed to going. And my friends at his ski tips, there's a, there's a rock under the snow, which he had to dig out like a horn rock and put a rope around it and repel over the edge oh. into this couloir that's just above the clouds there. And then descend uh, several thousand feet down this couloir and, and, and down into the clouds and, and out the bottom. Jeez. So, so for me, a lot of, a lot of elements come into play yeah. when I captured this. So yeah. you know, personally, you know, it means a lot to me. And I, I think too, as a, as a standalone alone photograph, you know, mm. when you look at it and I've had a lot of people tell me this, you know, it kind of stops you and yeah. makes you, makes you think about it. And, and it, your eye wanders about, it's not something you just look at and click and move on. You know, it's, it, yeah. it it's intriguing, you know? Yeah. And I, I guess the fact that I incorporated my ski tips in it definitely changed, you know, makes it even more interesting, you know, and something that I just kind of just did without really thinking about it. You know, I just happened to be there and pointed the camera down and, and shot it, you know? Yeah. It, you know, you know the funny thing is I sent this to uh powder magazine to my friend, David Reddick, who's the photo editor. And he's like, I love the photo, but I wish you didn't distort it with the fish eye. And I'm like, <laughs> No, it's actually, it's, it's not distorted. It's not a fish eye. It's just a normal wide angle lens, just looking straight down. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, uh, that's just the way it looks. You yeah. know? Literally the world drops away on both sides of us right there. You know, Oh, that is, kind of that is terrible. Yeah. That's a great story. Thank you for sharing that. Let's click on here. This is, this is what it takes. I mean, these are a part of your whole journey. It's not just the descent. It's the ascent as well, you know, and yeah. going up and, and kind of doing that. It's like, I mean, like you said, you're shooting with the wide angle here and kind of having that kind of moment and everything like that. It's pretty nuts. Let's talk about that. So I've seen a lot of photos with you guys ascending super steep, hard snow faces in correlate yeah, unroped. What's your decision criteria for roping up? Um, that's a good question. Um, you know, a lot of times we're using ropes primarily uh, if we have to repel something. Like, like when you're descending, um, 
you, usually, uh, you know, if you get to like a cliff or something or an ice bulge, you have to re use a rope, a rope to get through that to repel it. Uh, if the snow is too firm and too steep to actually descend on skis, we probably would most likely turn around before we got to the point of having to ski back down and be on, on mm -hmm. a rope for actually skiing. So it, it's, a, it's a lot of variables that come into play on that. But, um, you know, like I said, a lot of it has to do with the conditions and what we're presented with. And, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, usually we try not to use a rope while we're actually skiing. Um, but, right. only, you know, if you got to repel, repel over a cliff, which, you know, often is the case for some of these descents, you know, <laughs> you're, you're down, you have like an ice bulge or a cliff to, before you get to another good patch of snow. Wow. Gorgeous. This is just baffling. Tell us about this, because I know this was from concept to the ideation and everything of you creating this is, it, it wasn't just a stumble upon. This was something that you kind of planned and put together. Correct? Yeah. So this, um, yeah, so this, is uh shot with uh will gad who's uh mm -hmm. really really good one of my better friends one of my best friends really good friend of mine who he's a professional ice climber and he's been uh ice climbing for 30 plus years now wow. you know um kind of legendary in the ice climbing world and uh him and i have been going on trips for you know over 20 years now uh and pretty much every time we go on a trip we go on you know he's amazing locations and, and ice climbing in general when i photograph ice climbing i think as far as like the general public is concerned it's it's really um it's kind of surreal to the average yeah. person yeah. something that most people don't do or get to see so it, it's kind of visually really stimulating to see people ice climbing absolutely so so for this this image we went to uh to africa on mount kilimanjaro and this was back in 2014 and he had at the time climbed ice on six of the seven continents oh. and wanted to climb on all seven of them. And knowing that, you know, the ice is melting, you know, our, our window for climbing in Africa is, is, yeah. is shortening. So we made this trip and we, and we went out there and, um, you know, kind of funny thing about the stories or about this image in this trip is we had pitched it for a couple of years to try to like get the approval and funding to do it. And, and, um, uh, one of the responses was, well, can you send us photos of what it looks like and, you know, you know, like a concept of what it is? And we're like, well, there are no photos of anyone ice. It's never been done before, you know, yeah. <laughs> in Africa and, uh, yeah. and shoot ice climbing. We don't know what we're going to find, you know. So we had just kind of scurried a, a, around, you know, images of Kilimanjaro and yeah. neither these, these ice formations. But I really had no idea when they were taken, what they, you know, what would it be like when we got there? Hmm. So we ended up, uh, the, the trip ended up getting red, you know, got the red light to, or the green light to go. And mm. we went and spent about, maybe about 12 days on the mountain. Wow. And uh, throughout the course of, of this trip, you know, we we got some of the most uh, stunning images we've ever created. And this happened to be one of them. I can't believe it. It looks so surreal in that way. It's, it's Well, fun. that's the thing about this, about this image is, is how surreal it is, is that it was taken at about 18,000 feet on the uh on the crater of mount kilimanjaro which is primarily sand yeah. as you can see in this picture and what's left of these uh ice formations it's kind of like a iceberg just on sand so the, the fact that you got ice on sand is just such yeah. a surreal thing that, that you know the combination of the two and the interesting thing about this photo is um this was kind of really close to where we were camping and i'd seen this and i kind of visualized this photo it was usually sunny and nice and beautiful. And, you know, I, I had the yeah. idea in my head of what I wanted to capture, which was kind of a, a shot like this without the, the fog. And um, finally, the opportunity came and, you know, we went in the afternoon to go shoot photos. And literally 30 minutes before this photo was taken, I was walking in the sand barefoot, Jeez. totally clear, sunny skies. Then we started shooting the pictures and all of a sudden the, the fog and the mist rolled in. Oh. And it just made this really eerie kind of ethereal looking uh, look yeah. to it, which you know made the the image a lot stronger than just having beautiful blue skies. And then probably ten or fifteen minutes after I took this photo, it started snowing. What? So Holy literally, like, in the course of it, you know, yeah. less than two hours, I was bare feet in the sand, like I was on a on a beach or something, <laughs> you know. And then you know it was snowing and looked like this. So it's kind of a, an interesting backstory to that. Yeah, I mean, I I, I love that because 
you had the concept, you had the idea, you were able to take it to a brand to help you to do that. One of the questions was, you know, talk about the business side of how you submit to a magazine or to a brand. And um, that's what you did. You had that concept. It didn't come overnight. It, it took a little bit to kind of convincing and doing your vision. And then when you're there, there were so many variables. And that's yeah. what was the cool thing. But by adapting and being prepared, you still created an amazing, beautiful body of work to come back with. You know what I mean? Something that will live on for a very long time. And maybe no one will be able to play it in that way. Yeah, and, you know, that's a big part of, uh, you know, from the from the business side of things and, you know, in photography, as you know, it's a lot of it is coming up with the concepts mm -hmm. and, and trying to pitch that idea to somebody who who can fund that, you know, and yeah. and, and make that happen. Um, yeah, and oftentimes these are passion projects, you know, mm -hmm. you turn into a, a commercial commercial shoot, which which is what, what a lot of these are. Mm -hmm. that's, that's exactly what this was, you know, it was yeah. both it was both work commercial, but it was also yeah. a, a passion thing for them. Right. Beautiful. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Between Sets. Make sure to like and subscribe to be tuned in on all future episodes. Thank you.